Hi there, I'm Eric Piller, and I'm going to briefly introduce Twine, a platform you can use to create hypertexts. You can access Twine at this URL, twinery.org. You can download a desktop version of Twine for Windows, Mac, or Linux, or you can use it online. All versions look and work pretty much the same. For our purposes, I'll show you the web-based version. I'll start by clicking Use in your browser. Let's create a new hypertext by clicking New under the Story tab. Then let's give our story a title. How about we call it Two Doors? We can always change it later. Now we're in the main view. Each semi-transparent square is a node in the hypertext, or a passage as Twine calls it. The rocket icon simply means that this is where our reader will start. Let's double click to edit the node. It's helpful to give each node a concise, descriptive title. Your reader won't see the titles of nodes, but you'll need to refer to them from time to time. Let's title this passage, Start. Don't worry too much about the text editor commands for now. Note the mini cheat sheet that's present before you start typing. This shows you how to add links using double square brackets. We can also type text directly into the editor, and we can format the text, making our writing italicized, bold, and so on. I'll go ahead and get us started. You awaken in a small, dimly lit room decorated with yellowed floral wallpaper. The room is empty, apart from two doors on the opposite wall. Now we want to create choices, one for each door. So let's type, open the left door, in double square brackets, and then open the right door below it. Notice that we now have two new passages, one for each choice. As before, if we double-click either of these nodes, we can edit it. A ferocious tiger appears. It devours you. The end. Or, gold. The room is full of gold. I wonder what was behind the other door. Now imagine that we'd like to continue our hypertext by branching further off the right door path. One approach could be to create a new node and then link to it. Click New under the Passage tab. Let's title this one Angry Leprechaun. And what should we write? How about this? A leprechaun charges at you from the shadows. You're knocked unconscious, so you're unaware when, not much later, you're properly prepared and used as the main ingredient in the leprechaun stew. The end. Of course, we need to link this node to the rest of our hypertext, so let's return to open the right door. Then we'll type the following. Double square brackets, you hear a rustling behind a pile of gold. What's that? Question mark. Hyphen greater than sign. Angry leprechaun. Double square brackets. The arrow that we created with a hyphen and a greater than sign allows us to create a hyperlink whose anchor text is different than its destination. And because the node angry leprechaun already exists, note that in the main view we now have a unidirectional arrow connecting the passages or nodes. Let's go back to the right door path and add one more choice. Double square brackets, ignore it, and return to where you came from. hyphen, greater than sign, start, double square brackets. Now we have a bi-directional arrow, since it's possible for the reader to move in either direction between the nodes. Now we can test our hypertext. Click to open the Build tab, and then choose either Test or Play. Let's play through it to ensure everything is working as intended. Beautiful. Our final step is to export our hypertext as an HTML file so that others can use it. 
In the Build tab, click Publish to File. Save the HTML file wherever you like. If you want to work on your hypertext across multiple settings, you can use this HTML file to restore your work on Twine. Simply return to the initial screen and click Import under the Library tab. Then choose your HTML file. Voila! Some important notes. If you use the online version, your work is saved in your browser's local data. So if you clear your local data and try to open Twine in another browser, or even in a private tab, your work won't be there anymore. It's best to err on the side of caution and save often by exporting your hypertext from time to time as an HTML file. There are many more advanced features that I haven't shown you. I find the set variable and conditional macros for if-then statements really useful personally. If you want to give those a shot, click help at the top right and you'll be taken to the Twine cookbook. Also, the default story format is Harlow. I'd stick with that unless you know what you're doing. Hopefully this quick and dirty introduction helps. Please let me know if you have any questions.